Hi again, great talks. So now we are going to do cash flow from investing activities. We are still on cash flow statements. And in the previous video, we did cash flow from operating activities. Now we're going to do cash flow from investing activities. This one is simple. It's got only assets and fixed deposit. I would say uh, investing like investments and whether it's investments in tangible assets or in investments in financial assets. So it's just assets, let me say. So it will be the tangible assets and then the fixed deposit, which is the financial asset, the investment. So whether it's a sale, if it's, if it's a sale of assets, then it's cash inflow. If it's a purchase of assets, then it's cash outflow. The fixed deposit, if the fixed deposit increase, they say in 2020 you had 10,000 and in 2021 you've got 15,000, which means you put away some more money. Money came out of your bank account into the fixed deposit, so it's in cash outflow. But if the deposit matured and came back to us, so in 2020 you had 10,000, but in 2021 you have 5,000 5, in your fixed deposit, which means 5,000 came back, so it's going to be cash inflow. This is how it looks like. Um, the cash flow from financing financing activities. Process from um no no no. I'm not talking about financing, I'm talking about investing. Yeah. Purchase of fixed assets and then process from sale of assets and then increase or decrease in investments, like I like I explained. So it's like this. This is how you should do it. So now I'm gonna tell you so one of these will always be given because you need to use, you, you, the formula is the same to calculate either of these, the formula is the same. So you need one of these, you need this and everything else to calculate this. And you need this and everything else to calculate this. So I'm gonna show you, what is that formula? I hope it's in here now. Ah, uh, it is not in this one. So I think it's in, so this is in week five. So you can use week five as well. If it's not in week six. So in, okay, so, okay, where is that formula now? Oh, there we go. So, uh, so that is uh, week five, which is page three. So in week five uh, of cash flow statements, term one, you've got, so calculation of fixed assets, both of it. So you need carrying value at the beginning of the year minus depreciation, minus carrying value of the asset sold. Then you add the asset purchased and then you minus the carrying value at year end. Even here is the same thing. So if you are looking for the asset purchased, so you will have a missing figure here. And if you're looking for the um, asset sold, you have a missing figure here. And so so the rest you, you are supposed to have. So you have to work backwards. So if you're working backwards, you start from here going up and you change the signs. So if you're working uh, forward, it's going to be a positive beginning of the year, less depreciation, less carrying value. You add this one, which is okay. This one will, will, will yeah, you add this one. Let's say you've got everything and then this one will be a negative. But if you're working backwards, you don't have this one. So you don't have this one. You're going to say, Plus this one. So this one will be a positive. You start with this one. Positive. Then you add carrying value. You add depreciation. And you minus this, which is a positive. The answer is this. Same applies here. Minus this. Minus this because now you, you added this. So you minus this because you're working backwards. Plus this. Minus this. Then you get this. So let's look at the same example. Uh, this one. So this example... Then uh, activity one, then we need to do the cash flow from investing activities. So we are again going to use the Excel spreadsheet cash flow from investing activities. So purchase of fixed asset, purchase of fixed asset. And then we also have a sale of fixed asset. Fixed asset. Those are the only three things. The third thing will be the uh, change in fixed deposit change. Like I explained it in fixed 
deposit. That's all. You just need to know that, guys. You just need to know that. So purchase of fixed asset. Let me see. Let's first now check which one are we given. So we go back to the question and then we check here. Additional fixed assets were purchased during the year. So, and then an old vehicle was sold at its book value, 23500 So we are given the sale. You agree? We are given the sale of an asset. So 23500 So you go here immediately. Uh, sale is going to be 23500 So that is the cash inflow. Now let's go back and use. So so um, you can use it in this formula that I just showed you. Okay, I don't, I don't want to scroll again. Or in the exam format, you have to do everything in here. So let's remember. So I probably think that I'll have to scroll back so that we, I can show you. So we are going to need. Um, oh, no, no, I don't have to scroll back. It's a different page. So we are here. That's fine. It's a different uh, week. So we come here. So we are working backwards. So we are given the sale, which is this one. And we need this one. So this is the formula. You must just have it in your head. You add depreciation. You add carrying value. You, you minus the year and the carrying value here. And you, you plus the carrying value here. And you minus it. Carrying value at beginning. So let's start from this one. So you plus this one. Carrying value at year end will be. Okay. Um, carrying value at year end. So carrying value at year end. 1, 5, 4, 5, 400. So we start with that. 1, 1, 5, 4, 5, 1, 5, 4, 5, 400. And then we are going to. So 1, 5, 4, 5, 400. And then we are going to, let's go back to this one. So then you're going to add carrying value of the asset sold. And then you add depreciation. And then you minus carrying value at year end. So let's add the carrying value of asset sold. We were given 20, 23,500. 23,500. So that would be plus 23,500. Plus 23,500. Then we are going to add depreciation. Depreciation is also an expense. So it stands on its own from the extract, on the extract of the comprehensive income. So 61,000. Uh, 61, so you add that 61,000, 61,000. And then now you're going to minus the carrying value at the uh, beginning of the year. 1,201,500. Oh, so you minus 1,201,500. Oh, and if you use a calculator to do all of this, you are going to get. So if it's a purchase, money went out, then outflow. So you are going to get 388,100, which is all a negative. And this will be a negative. Then you get the change in fixed deposit. So like I explained to you, it's very simple. So where is the fixed deposit? Stays the financial asset is the fixed deposit. 2019 is 185 and 2020 is 195. So it went up, which means we put away more money, which means it's an outflow. If it had gone down, if it was from 85 to 175, then we would have had that 10,000 positive because which means, um, wait, let's see, which means it matured and it came back. Wait, 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 wait. 185, 2019, and 195. Yeah, we put it away. Oh, yes, yes. Never mind. I'm not sure. I don't know what, what my brain is doing. So 185 to 195, we put more away. Then 185 to 175, it came out of the fixed book deposit into our cash and cash equivalent. So it came back. So, which means money came in. Yeah. So now money went out. And the difference between this and that is, is 10,000. But I can just write it so that. We remember what's going on. So we are going to say 185. Now let's go and check. So it's, yeah, 185. 185. What am I doing? So 185 minus 195. So it went up. So the difference is a negative. So it's going to be minus 10,000. Then once again, we add everything in the box, which is all this, and put the total here. So I am going to use my 
Excel and we do that. And we are done. So in whatever format it comes, I just want you to have a bigger picture. It might come in this format or it might come just one big block where you have to put everything together. I just want you to know what you need to do. And that's it. Okay, thank you guys. Uh, I'll see you now when I do the cash flow from the financing activities. And then I'll probably do the net cash flow again in the next one. Net change in cash and cash equivalents. Otherwise, thanks guys. Bye for now.